Today's session is all about measuring direct booking success, which is actually quite a complicated subject. And there's many different levels at which you can do this. So I'm going to cover a lot of the basics around this type of analytics and then some more advanced things as well, and then show you how to get some of this information out of the StayFi platform. So I think it's going to be an exciting topic, something a little bit different than what we've done in the past. Uh, so really excited to share some insights here and hopefully make your direct booking strategy even more successful. Just a little bit about the sessions that are coming up. Uh, on October 15th, we're going to have the top three ways to drive more direct bookings, connecting StayFi to your overall book direct strategy. So in this section, we're going to really connect StayFi uh, to things outside of our platform. So whether that's your website, SEO, we're going to show how you can leverage StayFi to make other things more successful and what you want to go and do on those platforms to make sure uh, that you're maximizing your potential for direct bookings. And then on the 29th, it's going to be easy revenue wins. This is definitely going to be more focused on the upsell tools uh, within StayFi, as well as some other upsell tools we see people commonly use, and essentially how to leverage uh, different products within StayFi to increase the conversion for those upsells and help you earn even more revenue. And you can achieve that very quickly. So, Because unlike repeat bookings, which may take longer to come in, uh, upsells are a way to achieve revenue very quickly uh, that you may not have been realizing before. And like I mentioned before, everything uh, we talk about will be recorded. And then all of our previous sessions on email marketing, upsells, text marketing, Wi-Fi optimization are available on StayFi's YouTube channel. So definitely go check those out if you haven't already. Today's agenda, uh, first, we're just going to lay some ground basics around KPIs. Uh, what are the top metrics you should be tracking? And talk a little bit about how to go about actually calculating those. Then dive a little bit into Google Analytics and other types of analytics tool that can help you get answers around measuring your direct booking strategy and tactics. Uh, then we'll switch over to some recommendations for how to actually improve in these areas and then show you uh, some of the ways to do that within StayFi's platform. So we'll actually cut over to StayFi and show you some different analytics and ways to improve success there. And then finally, kind of a rough timeline of uh, when you should anticipate seeing results and then uh, how often you should be checking in, et cetera. And then finally, of course, we'll have time for Q&A. Here's just an overview of some of the metrics we think are most important when it comes to direct bookings uh, and marketing in general, when it comes to marketing directly to your guests. Uh, and I'll go into the definitions of these on the next slide, but just some around booking rates. So uh, what percentage of your bookings are coming direct? Uh, what percentage of your bookings are coming from guests coming back again, which is obviously one of the key areas StayFi wants to help impact. And then how you actually measure the return on investment for direct bookings, which is actually kind of a complicated question, which we'll talk about. Second, there's some definite stats around email marketing you should be aware of and tracking things like open rate and click rates for email and then actually how to associate revenue with emails which again is a little more complicated but we'll talk about that and i put last click revenue here and we'll talk a little bit about some challenges around attribution and just what you should be aware of there uh, we'll look at sms marketing within stayfi analytics around that and then finally some analytics around upsell revenue in our partners uh, as that's also very important to track to see how you are performing in those areas as well. Here are some basic kind of calculations you should be aware of uh, and maybe tracking on a periodic basis. So direct booking rate is simply the percentage of your bookings that are coming direct. Um, and you could calculate this on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, a yearly basis, and then of course compare it to previous periods to see how you're performing. Uh, you can also calculate this in one of two ways. One would be the actual number of bookings. Another one that also might be really informative is to actually look at the revenue from direct bookings versus um, overall bookings. Because for a lot of customers with StayFi, their direct bookings are actually typically longer and at a higher rate than their 
normal OTA or their average OTA booking rate. So while maybe direct bookings are 10% of your overall bookings, they might actually account for 15% of your revenue or 20% of your revenue. So it that can kind of reveal if direct bookings are more valuable in terms of length of stay or average daily rate. Uh, this next one can be a little challenging because most property management software is not going to help report on this, uh, but how many of your bookings are coming from guests rebooking? And of course, there you can download your bookings from your property management software and then see how many guests are recurring. So how many people do you see making multiple bookings? They can also be very interesting. Uh, you, you can see you know, who has stayed with you two, three, four, five times. Hopefully they're booking direct. If they're not, maybe you want to prioritize marketing or reaching out to those folks so you can convert somebody who's booked you several times into a direct booker uh, going forward. And then the next slide will all be about return on investment for direct booking, because this is, again, just a little bit more nuanced, and there's different ways to look at this. When it comes to email marketing, these are at least the first two, very straightforward to see, which you can see right in our email marketing tool or any other mainstream email marketing tool like MailChimp, open rate, uh, and click rate for your emails. The last one, which is conversions. So how you actually see the revenue directly from emails. Uh, you can do that in Google Analytics as well as some other tools. Google Analytics, definitely the most popular and free tool in our industry. And we'll actually show you what those reports look like in Google Analytics and how to go find them. So if you haven't looked into that yet, you'll see how to do that. SMS marketing is very similar to email marketing in that you know, you're going to have uh, emails that are messages that are delivered, so texts that are delivered, and then a uh, percentage of people that actually click through those texts. And we have that tracking in our SMS tool. And then finally, of course, um, you could see conversions a few different ways, and we'll talk about that as well. And then finally, uh, if you are doing any types of upselling, so whether that's services you're providing, things like early checkout, um, early check-in, late checkout, mid-stay cleans, as well as like third-party services where you're just collecting a rev share and don't actually have to deliver anything. That would be through partners like Viator, uh, the Host Co., other partners like Minoan uh, that aren't within StayFi, but I see a lot of people using. Uh, you can track those typically in, in their own tool. It's also kind of interesting to see what percentage of your reservations are purchasing any of these services because a tool like StayFi can help you increase what percentage of your reservations are purchasing these upsell services by helping you market to all of your guests. Uh, so there's definitely ways that we can impact metrics here because we can help push uh, different upsells in StayFi tools as well as kind of outside StayFi tools. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we go along. Now, when it comes to measuring the return on investment for direct bookings, this can be a little complicated. Uh, and the main reason for this is, are your direct bookings, uh, how much of that is cannibalization of OTA bookings you would have had anyways, uh, versus how many of them are net new bookings that would not have happened, or maybe they would have happened at a lower price, right? So if you had, let's say, 100% occupancy, and suddenly, instead of getting 10% of your bookings direct, you had 20% of bookings direct, you could see pretty simply uh, what percentage on OTA fees are you saving? And you may be splitting these fees between you and the guest, the saving. So maybe the guest gets a lower rate and then you are paying, you know, maybe split it 50-50. People do it different ways. Um, but what, may, what makes direct bookings more interesting is if you're doing direct marketing to your past guests, maybe you're also driving bookings that would not have been filled via an OTA. And we know that for most people, this is an opportunity because your occupancy rate is nowhere near 100%. Industry average is, you know, hovering around 60 to 70%. Obviously, it depends a lot on market and seasonality and things like that. Uh, so every net new booking that you can get directly that would not have come via an OTA is a huge revenue opportunity. And that's where we actually see most of our customers drive the biggest chunk of value from StayFi is driving net new marginal bookings that would not have happened otherwise, or maybe they would have happened later at a lower rate because you're cutting nightly rates as you approach those dates, right? So the metrics that we can very easily see StayFi influencing are 
your direct booking rate, so the percentage of all your bookings that are coming directly. Your rebooking rate is obviously we want to get not just bookers to return, but non-booking guests to return. And obviously we help you do that by collecting data on them and helping you market to them via email and text. And then you can see how much savings you can achieve by not paying uh, fees to OTAs, which average around 18%. And obviously it depends by channel. Also, you can consider the fact that uh, maybe prices on your website are slightly lower than OTA, so you're not uh, collecting all of these benefits yourself, but you're sharing them from uh, with guests. Obviously, the report, the most important related KPI that direct booking or direct marketing strategy is going to impact is your just rev par in general, which is your average daily rate times your occupancy rate, uh, because direct bookings tend to happen statistically further in advance and at a higher rate and are typically longer stays. Uh, so if you have a robust direct booking strategy that can increase your average daily rate. And then of course, the most important part here is it can also increase your occupancy rate. And that's why a lot of the upcoming tools and features in StayFi's email and texting tools are really gonna be focused around filling unbooked nights via email and text because that's obviously the way that you can most quickly realize tremendous benefits is by filling nights that otherwise would not have go gone filled and using the list and other data we're bringing into StayFi to help market those particular nights. So if you haven't checked uh, out this feature on our website, we have this ROI calculator uh, where you can punch in the specific information for your company and the results are based on basically looking at many StayFi customers, their booking data over several years, and kind of aggregating the average return we're seeing across many types of customers. And obviously, it's going to vary by where you're located and how well you're marketing and things like that, right? But it's just a generalized average of the return on investment that we see across a bunch of different companies. And you can see here in year one, year two, year three, uh, there's three blue boxes as part of this graph. And those represent kind of the three drivers I was talking about of where we can help you increase revenue. The blue bar, which is revenue increase, this is helping book those otherwise unbooked nights. So this is what we estimate to be kind of net new bookings or how we've increased the occupancy rate overall for customers. Uh, the light blue box or the medium tone one is savings achieved from OTAs, assuming this 18% average. And then the light blue is the additional upsell revenue we help generate for these customers. And obviously, so these numbers change uh, if you go actually use the tool, which I can show you a little bit when we go into the demo. Uh, you can adjust the number of listings, your average daily rate, your current direct booking rate, whether you're a property manager or you own the properties, that's all going to influence uh, the output here. But this can give you kind of like a benchmark uh, to view your StayFi results against kind of uh, what we see across the industry. So it can be a very interesting tool to play with. Uh, and it kind of emphasized what we notice is that uh, RevPAR is definitely the most important metric that a direct booking strategy can influence because it's all about increasing your overall occupancy rate and uh, rates the, by having more bookings out further in advance at higher rates. Uh, when you want to start kind of measuring the impact of direct booking strategies and tactics, and of course, StayFi is part of that, uh, having a baseline is really important. And we know baselines are challenging in this industry uh, because of seasonality. And also we went through some very high demand, high uh, occupancy years in 2021, 2022, and now things have normalized. So obviously it can be challenging to compare yourself to those years as opposed to kind of what we've kind of normalized now post that period of time. Uh, so ideally you would be measuring uh, things like your direct booking rate uh, year over year. So if it was, you know, 10% in September of 2023, what is that percentage in September of 2024? Is it 15? Is it 20? Did it go down, right? Understanding that is super important. Uh, and then because month to month comparisons can be challenging, uh, but obviously we want to see those numbers generally trend up over the course of the year as you uh, invest more into your direct booking strategy. 
There's also great tools out there, as I'm sure you're all aware, like key data, transparent, other ones where uh, you're not just comparing uh, year over year for yourself, but you can compare to other operators in your area because maybe your rev par has fallen year over year, but maybe it's fallen less than your competitors or other people in your market. So maybe your direct booking strategy is producing results. It's just because the overall market has uh, not improved or has gone down, uh, you're actually becoming more sustainable. And I'd say that's uh, for markets that have seen weakness in the past year or so. I say one of the things that we hear most about people that have used StayFi successfully in those markets is that their decline has been much less or they've actually improved year over year because they have that audience of 5, 10, 15, 50,000 guests that love their brand, they're able to market to. So they're not as dependent on demand swings that are coming through OTAs. And that's I really ideally what we want to help you guys with StayFi is building up that resilience, right? So you always have that loyal audience to go back to. So no matter what's happening in the market, uh, you have your own audience to advertise to that other people don't have access to because obviously everybody has access to the Airbnb audience, right? That's marketing there. Uh, so it's important to not only track your stats year over year, uh, but then also find a tool that lets you compare to other people in your market if you're interested in that as well, because uh, while you may see decline in certain stats, you might actually be much more resilient than your competitor. So important just to caveat, uh, you know, maybe your direct booking percentage went up, but your ADR slumped a little bit, but everyone in your area was performing a lot worse, right? So just you need to have that context to kind of get a full picture of how you're performing vis-a-vis -vis your peers. Now, when it comes to measuring the basics of email and text in StayFi, all the information is there, and I'll show you in a few minutes how to go access that information. But we show you right in our campaign dashboard, for instance, for emails, what your open and click rate is. Uh, we show you right in our SMS results dashboard how many of your messages were delivered. 90% of them are viewed, right? So there isn't, unlike emails, where you're going to have like recipients and open rates and have this big delta. In SMS, we kind of assume if it's delivered, it's viewed. And then that's really important is the click rate. And I'll show you guys how to see that as well. So you can calibrate your campaigns. And then within each campaign, you can see a lot more detail, including things like engagement over time, delivery summary, how many unsubscribes you had, uh, who specifically clicked on your email. So you can actually see which recipients clicked. And I'll show you again how to find all of these detailed analytics within StayFi so that you can view each campaign. To give an idea of kind of like what these are connected to is obviously open rate is gonna be most connected to your subject line. So if you have compelling subject lines, that's what's gonna have your open rate. That's why it would be higher with one email than another. And then click rate is all about the quality of the content. So of the people that opened it or of the overall audience who actually click through, and that's going to be driven by the quality or offers that you have within the actual content of your email. Uh, most emails are going to be like the vast majority of the value is going to be achieved within the first few hours. So you can see even here on this graph of the right with the first 24 hours, it peaks quite quickly within that first three hours. And then over the next seven days, it's really going to drop off and you'll have some opens and clicks, but it's really most of the value is going to be captured immediately after sending the email. This next part here is how you can go from understanding clicks and opens for email into actually understanding reservations and bookings. And in order to do this, you need to have Google Analytics set up. Just about every website tool in our industry includes Google Analytics as an option. And so you definitely should make sure that's set up and that you have access to your Google Analytics dashboard because it's completely free. Also, most property management software, if you're using their white labeled website product, it will also have this set up. The key caveat here is that you need to make sure you not just have Google Analytics set up, but you have what's called e-commerce tracking set up. Uh, E-commerce tracking is how you can actually go beyond just how many views and things uh, your website has into connecting uh, campaigns and traffic to actual bookings, both the transactions and the revenue. So 
I would make sure and check whether you have e-commerce tracking set up. If it's not, definitely go ask for it. Unfortunately, I know that some property management software websites don't have e-commerce tracking included, even if they have Google Analytics. I know all of the, I don't want to say I know all, but to my knowledge, every single like paid website vendor, like a ICND, Realtek, Boostly, et cetera, they have e-commerce tracking set up always. Uh, but some of the PMS websites, I'm not sure which ones do and which ones don't at this point. But if they don't have e-commerce tracking in their website natively uh, for the property management software you're using, definitely go request it as a feature. Is this going to give you a lot more valuable insight into how your website is performing? And I'll show you kind of the basic details below. Of course, also ask your website vendor if you did have a third party make your website to give you a tour of uh, Google Analytics and show you how to actually view these things yourself. So you're not just dependent on uh, what they are telling you, right? So definitely uh, learn or have someone in your team really understand how to use this. It's not that complicated to learn. Uh, but below here are kind of like the key highlights when it comes to email marketing. So in this first report on the top, uh, this shows you the top sources of traffic to your website. So on the left here, you see direct. That's if somebody just types in like stayfi.com into the browser and comes to your website directly. Google organic, that's obviously someone searched for a term where you had an organic search result, came into your website. Google CPC, this is if you're running Google ads. So cost per click is what CPC is. So if you're running Google ads on uh, for search, that's what this traffic is. And then number four here, it says email. Uh, email, email. So source and medium is both email. We automatically tag all of the emails sent with uh, from Stafi with these tags that Google Analytics understands. So you don't need to worry about how to set up tracking within our email tool. It's done automatically. So Google Analytics can interpret the traffic that they're getting from us correctly. And we will tag the, both the source and the medium of the traffic as email. So that's why it says email, email here. Running through this quickly, you can see users, unique users, or new users, so they haven't been to your website before, within this period of time, whatever we're looking at, sessions, and then bounce rate, pages per session, average session duration, that's what you get with standard Google Analytics. This right part here where you see conversions e-commerce, this is the important extra that you need to make sure is set up. Uh, this will show you the transactions, so the number of actual purchases made on your website. So here you can see for this period, there's 107, the breakdown by channel, there's probably more smaller channels here too, like it could be social, paid social. So there could be some smaller ones down below. Uh, you can see we have the direct, the Google organic, CPC, and email as seven transactions. And then you can see here the revenue. What's nice is they tell you right here the percentage of the total each of these make up. So you can see here uh, email was 6.5%, but the revenue was 7.7. .7. So the revenue from email related bookings is a little higher as a share than the transactions. So you know they were all a little bigger than your average. What's important to understand for this as well is this view is only telling you last click. So this means that someone literally clicked on a link in the browser or in the email, opened the browser and made a booking in that session. But we obviously know that a lot of people may have been influenced by email in the booking journey, uh, but it was not the last click to make that booking. So they may have, for instance, gotten the email, went to Airbnb, looked on their phone, and then either put your URL uh, your URL in the browser directly or Googled the name of your company and then made a booking. So this is why uh, email here is going to be understated in terms of its impact, uh, because the only reason that they knew to Google your name or to go to your website directly is because you've been emailing them every month for the past year, right? So then they were in market, they remembered your company, they went to the website as part of that journey. Uh, so this is like one view of email. It's going to be a view of email that definitely understates the impact. Also, Google Analytics is going to be, uh, there's going to be issue with like, some people might have things in the browser that block certain types of tracking. They, they might be moving between devices, right? So Google, Google Analytics is always going to understate the impact of your marketing efforts. But here it just gives you like 
this is the minimum contribution of email is definitely these seven bookings, but we know that it probably influenced more. One way to see this influence is a report here you see on the bottom right. This is also available in Google Analytics. It's this channel grouping path, which you can also find there, or you can ask uh, whoever set up your website to have you show them how to get this report. Here you can see all of the bookings where email played a role. So you can see there's this number seven, that's a very complicated journey someone went on. They clicked on an email four times, went to your website four times, went back to the email direct, clicked on a paid search link, then went direct, paid search link direct, found you on organic search, went direct back to your website, and then placed a $6,000 booking. And you can see that like a $6,000 booking is gonna be quite a considered booking. So they probably were doing a lot of other research, going to OTAs, going to your website directly, right? So uh, the ones above are a lot simpler, right? Website, email, direct, email, direct, uh, email. So for everyone that doesn't end in email, they're not going to appear in the email section in the above report. Whatever the last uh, channel listed here, direct for most of them, that's where these uh, bookings are going to be attributed in the overall report above. Uh, but probably a lot of these direct bookings would not have happened if you weren't doing email marketing. So this, again, just shows that email is always going to be understated in this main report above. Here you can see more bookings where email played a role in the decision of that guest to book with you, hopefully again or for the first time. And then they actually have an email marketing report. So if you click into the email uh, within Google Analytics, you can then see revenue by campaign. And again, this is limited just to that last click revenue, unfortunately, right? So this is going to be for those seven bookings, uh, which email campaign they were associated with. Uh, we also, when you send uh, email within our email tool, we also add this tracking that will include the campaign name. So you can actually see the campaign name and the bookings associated with it. So if you see your bookings via email go up a lot here, you can actually drill in and actually tie back to which specific email uh, those came from. And the state revenue as well on the bottom left just can be interesting too, just to see like what region they were from. Um, again, sadly, this is only a last click. So this is only going to give you that minimum that you definitely impacted with email. Uh, but there's definitely some leakage where it's going to come through other channels. But the reason they found or remembered to go to your website at all is, again, because of email. The other thing I'd say here is another great way to get at this information that's a lot simpler, or maybe you don't have e-commerce available for your PMS website at this point, is you can also use promo codes to tie sales to campaigns. This is like obviously the quick and easy one is if for every email that you send where you want to include a promotion, you include a different promo code. Uh, then you can go look at all your bookings and see which promo codes were leveraged, right? So that's going to be another great way to measure ROI. But of course, you have to be willing to give up some extra revenue through the use of promo codes, right? Which obviously not everyone wants to include a promo code in every email. And that's when you're still going to make sure you need Google Analytics to get a better sense of how those emails are performing. Uh, but promo codes are a quick and dirty way to give you an idea. Uh, it's interesting, though, we do see... Uh, not everyone ends up using the promo code, which is kind of odd. Uh, but I have customers where you see like five bookings from a specific campaign in Google Analytics, uh, but only four people use the promo code from that campaign. So someone clicked through that email and never ended up using the promo code. Maybe they sent it to somebody else. It can be a little unclear like why that would happen if they were eligible, but it's, it's strange, but we still see people for whatever reason, they click the email. Maybe they didn't see the promo code there. They still make a booking and they never use the promo code. So interesting just to note that still promo codes are not 100% perfect. And you still will probably undercount the ultimate number of bookings uh, that your emails are influencing. Uh, that's it on Google Analytics. I'd say in general, I would lean on uh, the company that put together your website. If you did have one, if you have a professional we made website to help you understand Google Analytics for your website. Uh, and then of course, that will help you measure this all on your own so you're not relying on them. And then of course, if your website doesn't have e-commerce tracking built in, please, please, please ask your 
property management software to add that as it will make their website product a lot more valuable uh, uh, to actually use for their customers. Now I'm just gonna uh, cut over to some upsell analytics. Uh, if you've been using StayFi, you probably know that we have two upsell partners that are built in within StayFi. Uh, one is called Viator and one is called the HostCo. Viator, if you happen to not know, is the largest marketplace for tours and activities in the world. So they do have tours and activities in most destinations where uh, our customers will be operating. Uh, and what's great about Viator is uh, when you use their affiliate program, you will get 8% of any revenue booked from any tour if a guest clicks on your affiliate link and makes a booking within 30 days. So the window that you get credit is quite long, which is awesome. So they can uh, click on your link and come back seven days later and you'll still get credit for that booking. Within StayFi, when you set up your homepage template, you can opt in for Viator, which is totally free. And then we send you a bunch of instructions for how to sign up for their affiliate program and implement Viator's code on your homepages. Uh, so guests can find that information about tours in your areas that you recommend and book them. Within the Viator dashboard, they have all the analytics you need to see how many people are clicking your links, uh, how many bookings you've made, uh, and then of course what your commission is that they pay out. So if you are using Viator within StayFi, definitely go and check your analytics within your Viator affiliate dashboard and see if you've made any bookings. If not, in a second, I'll just, you know, there's some quick ways to make sure that you are realizing bookings or how to push them more, which we can talk about in a second. Uh, the other partner we have that's built into StayFi is the HostCo. When you turn the HostCo on within StayFi, again, where you design your homepage template, we actually go and create a HostCo store for you and send all of your property information to the HostCo. And you'll get an email to log into the HostCo dashboard uh, where all your stores will already be set up. HostCo helps you sell two main types of products. One are goods and services that you are fulfilling. That would be things like early check and late checkout. Obviously, those are a lot more profitable because you are getting the vast majority of the revenue. They also have uh, a bunch of third-party partners uh, that guests can purchase services from. And just like Viator, you get a percentage rev share from those. Again, within the host code dashboard, you can see all of your visits, sales by store, all that analytics is available there. And StayFi has a ton of ways to help you push these products. Uh, so you can see improvement in the analytics here. So if you've signed up for these products and you're not sure if you've sold anything or how they're performing, definitely go and check them out. Uh, and then if you're not seeing results, definitely reach out to support or I'll talk about now or look at some of our other sessions, but I'll talk about in a second, a few ways to, to juice these numbers a little bit so you see more success here. Now I'm just gonna uh, cover some of the things that I talked about within StayFi itself. So you get a sense of how to take a look at some of these things uh, within your actual account. Number one is on our website. If you're curious about the ROI calculator, you can find this under the company section. In here, you can input stats about number of listings, occupancy rate, daily rate, percentage of direct bookings today, if you're a property manager, what your property management fee is. And then it will go ahead and uh, show you kind of what results you could achieve with StayFi. And definitely, um, again, kind of emphasizes that the vast, not the vast, but the majority or the highest return is to fill, uh, basically increase your occupancy rate by helping uh, fill more unbooked nights, right? And so that's what we want to help you achieve with email and text marketing and the other tools within the platform. Now I'll show you where to find all the email stats uh, within StayFi. And if you haven't seen us so far, we launched this new uh, homepage for email within StayFi with these one-click campaigns that you can set up. Uh, and if I go first, I want to show you stats for automations. So in that uh, section there, you can set up a welcome automation uh, to send an email to guests right when they log into the Wi-Fi. Uh, and here you can see right when you go to automations and click on the welcome campaign, uh, what the stats are for this campaign. And you can see here, these stats, if you know anything about email marketing are very high. Uh, so like 
these welcome emails get a very high open rate because they're happening right when the guest logs into the Wi-Fi and you're sharing pertinent information with them right away. If you click this full report here, uh, if you do have multiple emails in your automation series, you can see the sent open click for each one. And then of course, in the full report, you can see all those extra juicy details about which links are the most popular, which countries people are opening this in, uh, how many have bounced, how many are delivered, the percentage uh, that opened it, the number of recipients, you can look over a longer period of time. So a ton of information is here. Uh, for instance, maybe you change the subject line of this email and you see if like the open rate goes up or down over time, right? So there's lots of things you can do here uh, to see how these specific emails are performing. Also with any automation, the open rate is going to typically decline over time because when you send the welcome email, uh, you're going to get 70% to open it in this case. Then they send uh, another email after four days asking for a review. Typically, each subsequent email can have slightly lower engagement, uh, but these automations have, for email marketing, very high levels of engagement. So definitely, if you haven't already set one up, go to uh, create a new customer journey here and create a Wi-Fi welcome email, and you can go ahead and do that. Now, when it comes to campaigns, if you go to campaigns, you can see the stats for all of the recently sent campaigns as well as additional ones. Again, it will show you open and click rate right here. Now I can see something already interesting. Uh, you know, we had an open rate of this campaign of 38, 33, and this latest one had 54. So definitely something in this email campaign uh, was extra interesting to guests to make them want to open it. Um, and if I go and view this email, which looks like this, by the way, and they created this with our one-click email campaign builder, uh, you know, their subject here was fall foliage in Pocono land. So actually not like a pretty uh, pretty interesting that this one has such a higher open rate than their campaigns, uh, just because I guess people are very interested in fall foliage in the Poconos, which I guess is not surprising as it must be one of like uh, the highest kind of occupancy periods of the year for this type of operator. And you can see here, they built this great email using our one click campaign builder, which you can again access right here on the main page by clicking newsletter here. And it will walk you through building a campaign that looks just as beautiful as that one. So that's how you find uh, stats within here. There are even more stats under this report section uh, where you can go again, click all your campaigns, but I really like viewing this in the campaign section because you get that view right away in terms of, of recent campaigns, uh, which ones are performing higher than others. Uh, Another thing to notice here, just kind of curious, Firefox house launch, you see that had a decent open rate, but like double the click-through rate. So that tells me that this audience loves new property announcements in terms of actually engaging. So I definitely would try that as a strategy. So send an email whenever you have a new property, if that makes sense for you. Uh, as you can see here, again, has very high double the click rates when you have that uh, new property that you're showing your audience. Uh, when it comes to text marketing within StayFi, you can find all the results in the text marketing section here. And we make this very simple. We have this area called results. Uh, and this will show you first, uh, if you do have an automation set up, like the Wi-Fi welcome email, you can see uh, stats around sent, delivered, links clicked, unsubscribed. Again, within... Uh, our text marketing tool, we include all the tracking. You need to measure the links, actually who clicks the links when they receive it. Um, one thing to note here is that there's a lot of, uh, the our ability to deliver text messages has improved over time, uh, but there's always gonna be a drop off in sent and deliver just because uh, people can unsubscribe different ways. And also like certain carriers may block certain traffic for different reasons at different times. We use toll-free numbers as a way to improve our deliverability rates. You can see here of recent campaigns, it's pretty high. Uh, again, you can look uh, by campaign, you know, which things appear to be having a higher click-through rate. So here is one uh, that had a much higher click-through rate. I think it's easy because it's kind of like, if you look at the text here, uh, 
you know, it's different than some of the other texts. I think it's interesting that like giveaways don't seem to perform as well as just kind of these more generic marketing messages for this particular customer. Uh, another one where they gave away silver dollar city tickets here, you can see the click through rate here again was much higher. So by looking at uh, how many people are clicking on each of your text marketing messages, you can kind of see which types of messages are inducing higher interest. Free charcuterie board, very cool idea, but sadly didn't have quite the same results, right? So uh, you can try different things here. This person is experimenting a lot and they are seeing right away kind of what's interesting for their text marketing audience and what's not. Text marketing is also obviously from a speed to production much faster than building an email, even with our one-click builder, which made it much quicker. So if you haven't used uh, texting within StayFi, I definitely recommend that you take a look and set it up. As if you have, uh, let's say, Labor Day availability in this case, they sent this text. I'm sure they hopefully got some bookings from this. It's much faster to uh, send out a text for upcoming availability or you had a recent cancellation, especially if you're in a drive-to market and get those bookings right away from your audience that you've been developing in StayFi. Uh, even faster than putting together an email, uh, even though we've made that hopefully easier for you guys as well. Uh, finally here, just going back into the presentation for a second, um, here are just some ways to improve your overall ROI. If you, let's say you look at your direct booking stats and maybe they've improved year over year, but you feel like there's more juice to squeeze here, right? Um, definitely go set up your, or go try our new one-click email campaigns. If maybe what's been holding you back is you don't feel confident building emails or you feel like you don't have enough time, I promise you if you go to this main section here and set up a Wi-Fi welcome journey and try this new campaign builder, you're gonna be able to send a campaign a lot faster to your audience uh, so that you can make sure that you're emailing everybody at least once a month. If you've been lagging maybe in upsells, so you set up uh, the host code and you wanna push early check-in and late checkout, one really great tip that we have is one, um, add those as buttons to your homepage and send your homepage in advance to guests. Um, just as a little reminder, uh, if you go to Wi-Fi experience, edit homepage template, this is where you can sign up for the host code and Viator down here. We'll send you instructions of kind of what to do next. Uh, but what's important to note here is you can add these custom buttons. So you can add a custom button that's, let's say, right here. Request early check-in and request early late checkout. So once you've added these custom buttons, if you go to our bulk editor, you can then insert the links for these specific products uh, from your Hostco store, right? So here we have a request early check-in, request late checkout that links directly to the product in the Hostco store. I promise you, if you add these as buttons, you're gonna see a higher conversion rate, uh, both from guests requesting late checkout when they get to the homepage after logging to the Wi-Fi, uh, but also leveraging our pre-arrival tools to basically help you send uh, your homepage to guests prior to the stay. Uh, because if you call out that you can purchase early check-in and you send it to every guest uh, or booker through your property management software prior to the stay, again, you're going to get higher conversion rates on your homepage for both early check-in as well as tours and activities you might want to sell through Viator or the host co, right? So those are definitely two of the top ways to increase your uh, upsell and uh, ROI within StayFi. And then finally, like I was showing you, monitor and adjust your campaigns. So it was very quick just to look at the last five email campaigns, look at the five text campaigns, see which ones had higher open rates, which had higher click-through rates, and then you can adjust your offers and subject lines appropriately uh, to drive those and also give you ideas of what your audience wants to engage in. So maybe they uh, like free tickets to attractions. As we saw, they like the silver dollar tickets more than charcuterie board. Uh, as well as uh, they loved clicking on new property announcements. They also loved looking at uh, fall foliage, seemed like a very uh, attractive reason for people to return to the Poconos. Uh, so maybe you doubled down on that message. If you see you have 
have some upcoming availability, you know, you could say, hey, three, you know, weekends left for seeing peak fall foliage and like this is the only availability we have so you can build that fomo in and start driving as I again said bookings uh to maybe nights or availability that you're not getting booked through otas it's that's where you're going to really maximize your roi <laughs> again these are the general tips we've uh, gone over in some of the previous mastery sessions encourage you to go to the email text upselling specific ones where you dive into all those details as I know I gave a very brief overview here. Obviously for email, it's all about consistency, uh, sending at least having that first automation set up and then sending something every month is what's gonna keep your brand top of mind when they want to make another booking in your destination. And just like we discussed for Google Analytics, right? Uh, Email is going to show up here, uh, but the number of bookings you are driving is going to be greater than what's shown here because people are seeing your name every month or every few weeks, and then they're going to your website directly, and they would not have remembered to do that if you didn't email them in the first place, right? So email is going to not just show up here if you do it consistently. It's going to make your other channels more successful here as well. So you'll see that spillover effect uh, to drive more bookings. And then finally, uh, leverage our homepage product to really boost uh, guest awareness of your brand. So here's just a great example on the right. Make sure you are featuring your guidebook if you have one, whether it's a PDF or a link. Uh, make sure that you are using Viator and the Host Co to advertise tours and activities that your guests would find attractive, as well as early, late checkout or other services that you want to offer as the homepage is really going to help increase conversion for any of those upsells, whether they're through Stateify or through another partner. And then make sure you send this homepage uh, prior to arrival. And then as well as uh, in any messages like, luckily, our uh, new welcome email you can set up in our one-click builder is going to dynamically insert a link to the homepage for that property in that email that gets triggered, right? So we're really helping amplify whatever... Uh, impact uh, you want to make on these home pages by making sure they get in front of every guest. And then of course, make sure I don't see it here, but I really highly recommend that you leverage if you go to our uh, homepage bulk editor, we always have a book again link. Make sure you go and fill this book again link uh, with the link for this property on your direct booking website. Uh, that will just make sure that you know, any guest that's interested in coming back, especially while they're even there during the stay, is aware that you can rebook this property directly, right? So we just want to make sure that we not just have the website link, but we have that book again link uh, that guests are seeing right when they log into the Wi-Fi for the first time. Now, finally, before we go into the Q&A, uh, here's kind of just like a general sense of timeline and kind of what you should be thinking about if you're getting started with direct booking or with Stayfy. Uh, first part is, um, let's say you start with Stayfy and you start collecting a lot more emails. I would definitely set up the automation in our uh, main section of email, just so that every email is at least, every guest is at least getting that one email when they log into Wi-Fi. This will just make it easier to send subsequent emails because they will have uh, remembered that they uh, opted into your email marketing. Nothing is worse than, you know, collecting emails and letting them sit stale for six months, a year, and then trying to email them later. And you're going to see a lot higher unsubscribes just because they're going to forget who you are and why you had their email to begin with. I'd say within those first few months, you want to start those monthly marketing campaigns. Again, leverage the one-click campaign builder uh, to build that newsletter if you're not wanting to get into all the details of email design. Definitely recommend sending emails at least once a month so you get that billboard effect in their email inbox and that whether they click through the email or come back to the website, you will see those direct bookings coming in. And then over the next six months to a year, make sure you're going in and looking occasionally like I did at your open rates and click-through rates. You can see, like I showed you very quickly, which things are hitting, which things are not hitting, and then use that as learnings to influence future campaigns. And finally, after a year, Make sure you have those baselines established so you can say, hey, we started this in January last year. Now in January of 2024, 
how do we compare when it comes to direct booking rate, rev par, occupancy, all of those things? Uh, are direct bookings, uh, are we getting more direct bookings and are the efforts we're making paid off? Or maybe, hey, you didn't invest a lot. Maybe you set up StayFi, didn't do very much. Maybe saw some success. Uh, maybe in this next year, right, we can increase uh, the frequency of our campaigns and start to drive even more results, especially if you're seeing declines in demand from other channels. And I think that's one of the most important things to consider is if you see some weakness on Airbnb or Verbo. I've heard a lot about uh, declines in Verbo demand in the last year or so. Uh, how can you use this audience to substitute for that or even go above and beyond what you would be getting if you just were on those uh, particular channels? Now I'm going to go over to questions. Uh, yes, someone asked, how would a guest request uh, early check-in or late check-out without being at the property? Uh, let me just explain this in a little more detail here. So like I mentioned before, if you go to bulk edit home pages here, you can sign up for the host code. And so once you do that, you'll log into your host code account. You'll set up early and late checkout products for all of your properties. And let's just say you've done that, right? So you've set up the product there in the host code. Then you kind of have a few options in terms of like, how do you want to share those options with guests? Um, there is a link you can find here for each of your home pages, right? So if I go ahead and view this home page here, and I believe we set this up already, well, not this one. Sorry about this. Let me just go to the right account. Yeah, here we go. So you see here, uh, they added the custom buttons to their home pages, and then they linked to the early check-in and late checkout product in the host code, right? So that's like step one is we're advertising these very prominently. They're in our home page. Now we have some different options. One is you can find the link to each of your specific home pages here on the right. And then you want to send this to your guest or to your booker prior to arrival. So in your property management software, you can automate a bunch of different messages depending on the channel to guests prior to their stay. We want to send them a link that says, hey, if you want to purchase early check-in, late checkout, maybe you have some tours and activities here too. Uh, this is where you can do that and at least give that to the booker. Then obviously when guests log into the Wi-Fi, they're going to get taken to their homepage and maybe... The wife of the booker or the husband of the booker is like, hey, sweetie, let's buy late checkout because we want to stay longer. And then they can purchase that product at that time, right? But obviously, early check-in has to come before then. We do have this tool within StayFi called pre-arrival messaging. This is just going to depend on the property management software you use, like what we can do. In some cases, we could send this message like before the stay, like on your behalf, this case, seven days before arrival, we're sending this automatically through Guesty to all the different bookers via including the link to this homepage. If we don't have that with your PMS, we have some different options, but we always can um, basically, we always have this set up manually section where you decide like what message you want guests to get prior to the stay uh, with the link to the homepage and how to, you know, we want to purchase early check and late checkout here. And then at least here for you, uh, we've created that message with the right link, right? So we kind of like did the work of putting in the right homepage link based on the property. And then you can paste these into your property management software. And, you know, in terms of which ones we have the automated ones, just going to depend on what software you have connected. Um. Sorry, Chris, I don't totally understand your question. Um, I don't know which thing you're referencing me to get a admin login, so I don't have to get a code. So I don't know if you can clarify. I wasn't sure exactly what you are referencing here. Uh, if anyone else has any other questions, uh, feel free to add them. Or Chris, if you want to comment on, on yours, because I don't quite understand it, uh, feel free to do that or we can wrap up.
Oh, it's asking you for your, yeah. So we have, um, I think Yvonne will answer this. this. is definitely one where you can email support. I think this has to do with their like two-factor authentication uh, for your account. Um, so I think definitely support at stayfi.com can help you with that. And I think Yvonne is going to write an answer for you. Yeah, Brent asked a question about open and click rate. I would say if you went and Googled this question for hospitality, you're going to see like an open rate of between 25 and 40% is like normal. It's going to be a pretty wide range. I'd say what's very interesting and what I think is promising is that I actually see for our customers a much higher engagement rate on average, up than like 40, 50, 60% especially depending on the type of campaign. Um, so I think that really speaks to like the way that we are collecting data uh, through the Wi-Fi is actually producing uh, individuals that are much more high likelihood to engage with the campaigns that we're sending because they're all guests that have stayed with you before. I think you see kind of lower open rates amongst like maybe if you did a like give get on your website or someone gave you a their email in exchange, you gave them 15% off, they might just unsubscribe right away once they get the code, right? So, or they may not engage with their email. So within StayFi, I see like 30, 40, 50, 60% to be kind of like the range. And definitely being at the higher end of that is great. Automations also typically have higher rates, uh, but we're definitely, uh, for most customers, are, are overperforming the industry average as a whole. Click-through rates, again, if you were to Google like hospitality click-through rates, it's going to be like one, two percent. Again, some of the examples I showed you were getting four or five all the way up to 10 percent, which is nuts for an email to get a 10 percent click through rate. So, again, uh, you know, I'd say in general, I see our customers are overperforming the average. Uh, but within your account, you'll see which things are more successful than others. Right. So. And then finally, uh, we will email out this recording to our newsletter list. And then also all of these recordings are available on StayFi's YouTube channel. So you can find this one as well as all the other uh, marketing mastery sessions we've done. And with this, that, it looks like those are all the questions we got. So uh, one more question uh, about someone claiming an email is dying and to send a group text when you send an email. Uh, I would say like you may want to. So if you are sending a promo code or maybe you see you have lower than expected occupancy for a month, it's coming up. Obviously, you want to leverage every channel you have at your disposal to get success. So if you're doing like a fall promotion, send it via email, send in a text. Obviously, you're going to reach more people and have more people have success. I don't agree that email is dying because uh, A, you know, we can see across many, many customers' email accounts, and we see robust engagement and bookings. Um, and many of our customers get a high percentage of their direct bookings from the email channel, whether that is uh, through that billboard effect or, of course, last click attribution. So I don't agree. I think people may become more curated and how many let's say emails they're subscribed to so you should you know make sure you send high quality content not spam people etc uh but definitely don't see email as a median uh changing anytime soon in terms of its roi it's also the lowest cost channel you know, relative to others right so uh compared to search marketing right gonna be very expensive per click Facebook marketing, again, very expensive per click, very, very expensive per booking. Once you capture an email to market to, the cost to you know, like use our email solution, right, is relatively extremely inexpensive to reach out to those people uh, than these other marketing channels, right? So if you look at like the cost per impression or cost per click and you compare email to other marketing channels, even Airbnb, right? Like what's the cost of an Airbnb booking? What's the cost of a Verbo booking? Email bookings are always gonna be the cheapest uh, of all the different marketing channels if you even include OTAs, uh, because once you have the email and you're marketing to them, you can reach them pretty much as much as you want. So I think you can't just look at it from the angle of like, you know, 
are we going to get as many email bookings as the last year? But also, like, what is the cost for each of these bookings? And it's going to be much, much lower. So that's an important consideration to make as well. Sweet. But that's a great question. Uh, we can chat more about that because uh, it's going to depend a lot by uh, for a lot of different factors, right? So um, sweet. Well, again, thank you, everybody, for attending. And definitely uh, really excited for our topic in two weeks because we're going to zoom out a little bit and talk more about websites and other direct marketing uh, strategies and approaches and how to connect those back to StayFi. So I think that's going to be a very exciting topic. We're going to tie a lot of what we discussed here into to bigger themes and to bigger uh, kind of efforts that you can take to improve across the board. So thanks again, everybody.